So hello fellow Earthlings. This is Earthling 645546-3728. And I saw a video called Our Democracy No Longer Represents the People. Here's how we fix it. Or something like that. I might have made a slight mistake. And it's by Larry Lessig. And basically Mr. Lessig starts out by talking about a protest with respect to the election of the governor of Hong Kong. And he's basically saying that in that situation, what they did is they made it that they can only nominate a certain number, a certain group of people. Basically, the people who are approved by the Chinese government, that is who the people are allowed to vote for. And, of course, on the basis of it, he, he does several physical demonstrations of the actual people in control because the actual people who get to nominate uh, the nominees, they control the system because they can make sure all of the nominees are people who they approve of. Then he transposes the situation from uh, Hong Kong and China over to the US where there's a guy called Boss Tweed I guess who I think would have been someone involved in American politics uh, perhaps in the early 19 somethings and basically that guy was saying that he doesn't care about who votes for who as long as he gets to choose who they're voting for what the pool of nominees is and what he reveals is that what we see as a kind of stacked, unfair system that is in modern day uh, China and Hong Kong is actually a system that comes from the US. And in that system, and you know, to cut to the chase, the idea is that in modern day America, there is a very, very small group of people who control who the nominees are for both the Republican and the Democratic Party because the people who are allowed to be on whatever tickets for both of those parties they have to have a certain amount of money and he's saying that only 400 families in the US contribute about half of the money that those people who are ev going to be eventual um, nominees for the Democratic Party, that is the, the pool is controlled by 400 families in the US. So at the very first stage, before people even decide that they want to choose between Bernie, let's say, well, Bernie is an outside case, but between normally, um, let's say between Al Gore and whoever else is on the Democratic side or they decide that they want to choose between Bush and whoever was on the Republican side that initial pool those people who get to run to primary that's determined primarily by 400 families in the US so even if you say for example that oh well I'm Democrat and I'm, I'm Republican and they're, they're different they are different, but overall, when you average them all out, they're not controlled by 325 million people. The 300 and, well, the adults of and the voted, voted, voting capable 320 million people, I think it might be 100 and something million, those people only get to vote for who the 400 families primarily are in favor of. So is it any any confusion to the fact that always those the interests of those 400 families especially their common interests which is the interests of large businesses and wealthy people are what is actually performed. That's what's actually, those are the bills that actually get suggested and turned into law. 
I think one of the things that he had on the screen was the illusion of choice is what keeps the, the people at bay. And wow. I mean, at the end of the day, um, he had a, a graph where he was showing um, from zero to one hundred percent of the people of any given issue, what um, the likelihood of a bill or a particular policy being implemented implemented by the United States government, you can see that from zero to going towards a hundred percent of the people um, amongst those four hundred families, uh, whatever they are interested in that's what gets passed. If 0% of them are interested in it, there's a small amount of likelihood of it getting put into policy. And if there is a 100% or tending towards 100%, you can see the likelihood of it go up, up, up. There's a line. Then he drew, uh, made another graph that showed from 0 to 100% likelihood of what the public might be interested in as a policy and the likelihood that that actually becomes implemented and he showed that it was completely flat meaning if zero percent of the public are interested in a particular policy or a hundred percent of them are interested in a particular policy it doesn't matter it doesn't affect the likelihood of whether or not that bill gets passed and you know, I, 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 to me, it's just astounding that what the people in Hong Kong, what they're fighting for, is what Americans and Britons and Germans and French people and all people around the world and in, in democracies around the world have. And what they have is the ability to say what they feel like it in most instances to different varying extents they have the ability to a freedom of speech as long as it isn't inciting a riot or if you happen to be in germany and you are nazi then i think that's illegal there are certain things that are illegal in uh britain and for the most part in the u.s you can say just about almost anything that you want except to direct somebody go kill that guy or something like that um, or sell or yell fire in a movie theater according to the Supreme Court but the point is that that freedom of speech what he's saying is it doesn't really matter because even if you can get most of the general public to agree with a particular point the likelihood of it being implemented in policy is it really doesn't matter what matters is whether or not the powerful are wanted implemented in policy and that is just crazy so people like Greta Thornburg she doesn't have to talk to you know I was thinking to myself the other day I'm like she's talking to the wrong people she's talking to politicians she needs to talk to the general public based on what this guy is saying she needs to talk to Bill Gates and Warren Buffett and Steve, well, not Steve Jobs, he's dead, but, you know, Mark Zuckerberg. She has to convince them that what she wants is a good idea. And they will select the crop of nominees. Um, based, on, on, based on that, the people will vote for those particular politicians. And that is really sad because it seems like it doesn't matter if you're in communist China or in the US with you know the ability to say almost anything you want convincing the masses just doesn't matter and the masses just don't really matter um, Mr. Larry Lessig you know he had a very interesting speech it's 10 minutes I mean 20 minutes you can take a look at it anyway you can like or unlike, you can subscribe and or share. And of course, you can do nothing. Peace.